I've always been one to advocate change, and I've used art as a medium to express my ideas. Personal change comes through adversity, struggle, and comparison. You have to see outside your own world and view others' plight and strife. You need to feel. You need to grow an understanding of what others are feeling to change inward. In other words, develop a huge sense of compassion. I hope my art resonates feelings that others can respond to. There's a story behind each image. I grew up in the tumultuous 60s and 70s. I happened to have strengths in art and writing. And when I went to art school, found a new amplified voice in photography and filmmaking. As a female, though, I felt the door had been shut on me, the opportunities limited. I was discouraged from many things I wanted to do, so my art reflected my feelings of entrapment, of looking out with haunted looks, hiding behind windows, of trials and struggles as I thought of women throughout history. I sought change and found it in a bustling city, and finally communicating with a camera, it spoke volumes as life whispered to me. Vibrant with people and energy, I had newfound vision and inspiration. My first film in art school was about a jazz musician. I incorporated a lot of my art in my film. Once it was uncapped, I took the lens with me back to my roots on Cape Cod and documented fishing life there. I tried to encapsulate the people, the work, again, the feeling of the place, using my connection to it and my love of it. For my final film project, I decided to make a documentary about prostitution. My art school had no idea I was attempting to embark on a project with such a dangerous subject matter. I had no supervision, no help, and got way over my head. A pimp tried to turn the tables on me. When that didn't work, he played mind games. Then he decided I couldn't use the interviews I'd filmed. He stalked me, threw rocks at my window, and stole my mail. I moved for my safety, but further from my school and job. My film suffered and wasn't completed in the version that told a complete story. After graduation, I headed to LA to work in film. Soon, I was working at a major network and eventually shooting and covering events and news. Again, because of my gender, I was blocked from positions I wanted. This time, I was told I was too pretty and would be a distraction to the men. Because of that, my career took a different path, one where I was a witness to history. My first overseas assignment took place in Israel. Remnants of the Six-Day War loomed large. I was there to cover the first ever Holocaust Survivors Reunion. Menachem Begin spoke at the Knesset, where we waited for his speech with the Israeli press. My partner Scott and I worked through illness, long hours, and arduous travel. We visited a kibbutz to see what life was like there. I didn't speak Hebrew, but managed to communicate. We covered the opening of the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Jerusalem. While we were there, I photographed life in the Arab Quarter and also captured the feeling of the West Bank. I love faces, shooting them, painting them, and relating to folks wherever I go. There can be whole stories in one look or say a lot in one frame. One time, I found a beautiful, affordable penthouse apartment. When I went to sign the lease, I brought a friend along with me who happened to be black. I was kept waiting. Then after a long while, I was told it wasn't available anymore. I don't know what it's like to be of color, but many times through my association with my friends, Hispanic, African American, LGBTQ, or different for whatever reason, it pains me to think that some folks don't believe everyone deserves kindness, dignity, equality, and freedom. I use race as a theme in a lot of my works. I want to be an art activist in the sense that I want to resist wrong and spotlight joy and love. My world in LA was surrounded by music, people in the park, creativity, kids playing, folks collected outdoors. They sought serenity under the trees. In one place I lived, I befriended children whose family all resided in a single 1920s garage built into a hillside. 
I saw Vietnam War hero turned activist Ron Kovic and his anti-war group outside the VA hospital. They were protesting the treatment of vets, especially for the denial of Agent Orange's effects and for their lack of treatment at the facility. Another vet was with the group. He had a scar running from his brow to his hairline. Making a stand takes courage and commitment. Once a member of the Black Panthers, another activist photographed is Angela Davis. The FBI tracked her throughout most of her life. There was little she could do without being tailed. From early on, I advocated peace, and my art reflected my passion. If we only took care of each other, if we valued negotiation, compromise, didn't assume positions that we had to defend, perhaps that is a dreamer's wish in a realistic world, but without the great thinkers or people with ideas and inspiration, no improvements could become reality. So I will continue to believe that positivity can change the world, one person, one powerful image at a time.